want to put data in the United States because of the Patriot Act. Conversely, not a lot of countries want to have their data stored in China because of what the Chinese might do. Okay, and then this just takes a look at data center and the fact of replication. Now you have a problem with the idea of replication, and that is when you delete data, if it's been replicated two or three other places, has that data been deleted? I'm just gonna run through this. This just shows virtualization, how really big it is. That's, if you look there, those are spaces for trucks to pull in. So you can get an idea how big that is. If I were to show you the one in Utah, it's owned by the NSA, you'd have a stroke because it's like six times the size of this. And you wonder what data the NSA is storing. Okay, security issues, failures by the provider, attackers can be internal or external. Do they come in to destroy you or do they come in to colonize you? If they come in to colonize you, what kind of damage can they do? Because it's just like having a spy inside your system. And this is me, this is how I keep my password on there. You have reliability and availability issues. We have a lack of tools and procedures, and we have integration issues. I had an integration issue with trying to get my United States plug into one of your plugs with two prongs. It didn't integrate very well, okay? And then, social engineering attacks, I just put this in as a scare slide. The real scare slide is people are getting a whole bunch of data. This is the IRS that got hacked and the amount of data that is leaked by the IRS. Okay, shared service consequences. If you are sharing services with someone, then if they have a problem and get their IP address and block yours or too, you can never run on the cloud, which is somebody's going out of business whose data belongs to whom. The other one is, once they have your money, they have you locked in. So getting out can be a little tough. Data protection and knowing what goes on with regard to data protection and lack of transparency. What the government is doing with regard to privacy, how much of your data. There was an article about the NSA having the ability to crack information. Okay, application security. One of the things too is, you don't know if the cloud security vendor is doing patches. You don't know what kind of data and records they're keeping. You don't know if they're following legal, legal compliance issues. With regard to identity management, anybody can buy cloud services with a, with a credit card. And you can get a credit card by prepaying for it. And the last is whether or not you have certifications for folks. Security and pen testing, doing that on a cloud gets to be fairly difficult. Security and pen testing determine how well your protection is working. But the cloud has other people. And when you attempt to do this testing, you may impact other folks who are in that cloud space. Maybe that the cloud provider can't determine whether you're penetration testing white hat or whether you're hacking black hat. And if you look at this slide, it talks about discovery to assessment, to exploration, up through execution, it says pen testing. That's also the slide that I use. I change the title and I say anatomy of a hack, where these are the steps that a hacker would use. Pen testing in the cloud, first of all, the cloud may keep treat the security practices as confidential. Problems, permission, rapid change. Remember I talked about expand, contract, expand, contract. Well, you have rapid change, plus you don't know where the data is. So it's very tough to get that. And the question is, can you get access to the logs? And what do, am I getting a five minute line already? Whoa. What other things within that uh, log is available for review, such as other customers of the cloud? Are they there? And then investigating, can you access this, and can you determine what was exfiltrated? 
Exfiltrated means what was copied. Because it's very hard. If I run money from the bank, it's very hard to do that. If I took a picture of your credit card, you don't know whether or not I took that picture and whether or not I have it. This just says the important thing is to know yourself. Know what your capabilities are and know what your exposures are. First cloud crime, hackers pose as normal guys. They got a prepaid credit card, they got on, and they took out curiosity and they acquired a bunch of personal data. Now cloud forensics. Cloud forensics is nothing more than digital for, oh. My time's out. Anybody's welcome to stay and I'll finish. I have a couple more slides on cloud forensics. It's the application of data forensics. The problem is it's a hybrid thing. It's remote, virtual, forensics, but it's organizationally involves everybody. Everybody's got to work together in order to do forensics. And then legally it implies multi-jurisdictional and multi-tenant. And so that problem is that if any one tenant doesn't like this, then there can be a problem. The other is, where's your data and what are the jurisdictions for getting at your data? Cloud versus forensics, location independence, elasticity. As I said, it grows, it shrinks. So you don't know what happened to that data. Multi-tenancy. Digital forensics, prime targets. We go where the data is, healthcare information, money information, the massive amount of storage. There's no physical control. And each cloud server contains files from many users, hence making it very difficult to do forensics. Logs are continually overwritten. It's just like the, the black box on an airplane. You get the last 20 minutes. You might have a week's worth of logs. Systems and social graphs are current forensics. Tools can't adequately address what we have. Seizing the media, this is pretty good. Cloud seizing isn't feasible. I showed you that, but if you're looking to take out that Apple data center that I showed you, you'd need one of these. That's a land train. About 20. Actually, what they would do is they would confiscate the entire building. The important point on here is an investigation of private technology. The FBI seized a bunch of computers. And when they seized the computers, that meant that anybody who had anything on there didn't have access to it. And about 50 companies went out of business. And the FBI said, well, that's too bad. This talks about the volatility of information. And the takeaway on this is that if you have a virtual machine and you turn it off, you've lost your data, which means that if the person changes their data uh, in that period of time, you have no idea of knowing it. If you do a restart of a virtual machine, you've zeroed it out. Registry entries, temporary internet files that reside and stored in the virtual system, they're also lost. This is just an idea of Amazon provides a service where you can take a snapshot of a system in time. 